What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Coach T, with Chicago Bears 360 with Coach T and Swifty. Back with another live video for y'all on this Sunday. I forget what day. June 11th, a couple days from, uh, uh, from my birthday, about a week or so away. We're going to have. Look, look, I'm glad to be back with y'all. Thanks for joining the session. Do me a favor. If you come in the comment section, you watch this on the replay. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Also, do me a favor, man. Follow me on Bears360 underscore Coach T, man. Let's tap in. Let's keep up throughout the week, man. I'm not doing a whole lot throughout the week other than tweeting, right? A lot of work going on. Listen, I got a great show for you today. Today is part two of Coach T's Luke's Getsy playbook-ish Having some fun, man, with some software, designing some plays, um, implementing some of my uh, philosophies into this thing and why things make sense for me and why they may not wait, make sense. Uh, shout out to my family there, Katie. So this is part two of Coach T's version of Luke Getz's playbook. Also, man, we're going to talk about some of the no national media narratives out there concerning the Chicago Bears. I have a hot take from y'all favorite Bears national media commentary or local regional media commentator, your boy Cap. I want to put that on the show and see y'all thoughts on what Cap had to say about Justin Fields and this upcoming Bears season. And we're going to talk about some O-line, have some O-line discussion. Uh, I want to bring Swifty on to talk about um, some of his breakdowns, some of his takes off his last video uh, discussing the offensive line. And then we'll talk about other position groups as well. A lot of discussions around all the position groups related to this Bears team. A lot of unknowns, a lot of we don't know what they expect, a lot of speculation. But listen, that's why we had a show. So y'all know what to do. We're going to get into it real fast. Y'all know what's next. Cue the intro, maestro. Let's go. And just like that, we're back. Coach must have deleted the intro video. It's all good, man. We'll improvise and adapt and overcome. That's what we do around here, man. I be doing too much sometimes, man. So leading up to the intro of the show, I must have deleted all of my videos. I don't know how I did that, but I somehow managed to always be able to do it. But it doesn't matter, bro. Because we're still here, we still live, and we're going to get into it. Do me a favor. If you're coming into the comment section, y'all know what to do, man. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bells, man. This is all fun, man. I have fun with it, bro. I don't take myself overly seriously serious with this thing, man. This is a passion project. I like to have a little fun with it. Sip out of my Bears cup. This is what we do until the season comes, man. Shout out to my boy Jay Capone, the Don in the comments, bro. Shout out to you. Thanks for joining. We're going to have some other folks get in here in a second. I appreciate you guys. we looking out for my boy Swift. But real fast, y'all know what section comes up next. Let's hope I don't jack this one up. We're going to give a shout out to all of our field soldiers. Y'all know who those people are. The field soldiers, the field soldiers are all the people who have over the time have liked, subscribed and subscribed to the channel. Shout out to you guys. Let me pull up my phone real fast and let's catch up with our field soldiers and give them a quick shout out. See if we got some folks in here um, that have joined the channel since last time that we want to give a quick shout out to, man. And we're going to do it. Just like that, man. So Tom Smurz, man. I have to give Tom Smurz a shout out, man. This guy has gone through pretty much all of my old videos. Not only did he join the channel, but he's pretty much gone through all of my old videos and comment and liked on the old videos to catch up to where we are right now, man. So I want to give a big, huge shout out to him, man. Shout out to Jeremy Seals as well. Man, Jeremy Seals got in the comments, got a little loose on us, man. But listen, again, I don't take this stuff overly seriously, man. Y'all just be respectful in the comments, bro. We're going to keep y'all 
It's part of the family. But welcome back, Jeremy Seals, man. You always in here. I'm gonna shout out some of the some of the longtime patrons as well, like Jay Capone the Don, Deke, Deacon Fu, who's been a part of the channel for a while. Saint Frank Zapita, always commenting on the videos. Uh, Ray Star, Cam T, Cam T, Eric, first name only, Chris Pena, uh, and let's do one more. Mike the Wolf. Shout out to you guys, man. Salute to all the field soldiers, man. We appreciate y'all for liking and especially subscribing and really just tapping into our content, bro. You don't have to spend your time hanging out with us, man, but you do, but you do, and we appreciate that. Man, listen, I'm glad to be back, bro. So it was a tumultuous couple of weeks, bro. So, of course, I went down to Florida a couple of weeks ago. Then last week when I came back, I was sick last week on last week's show, but I did it anyway, right? Fought through, did the show. Y'all can tell if y'all probably go back and watch that video. The energy wasn't all the way all there because I was sick on the show. But Coach T still brought that, those fresh takes for y'all, man. Show you how committed we are, bro. That's all for my field soldiers, man. Those just tapped in if you want to be a part of field soldiers. All you got to do is subscribe to the channel, bro, and we appreciate you. So, Let's get into this, man, because y'all know how we do, bro. With the national media, bro, it's, it's always, like, it's always something, right? And Bears DIY Media, you know, we kind of try to take a different approach to bringing Bears content uh, for our followers and for you guys, man. And, you know, let's watch the video and I'll get into kind of... My, my annoyance with this whole thing, you know, kind of here in a second, bro. But let's watch the video and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get into it and, and let y'all know what's going on with this right here real fast. So let me pull this up um, and we'll get into it, bro. So. Just nothing's working today. Wow. Okay. We just going to adapt and overcome again. None of the videos are working today. Man, this is crazy. So, again, we're going to improvise and overcome, man. So, check this out. We're going to do a few different things. I got you. I still got you. I still got you. Watch this. I can still pull it up on my laptop. The video from Cap. Nothing's working today. <laughs> it's all good, bro. Uh, let's see. Max and Jay talk bears. All right, here we go. I told y'all we can still pull this off. We can still pull this off. Uh, let's go solo with this. Let's go solo. And let's get this let's get this take from Cap. I'm gonna replay it. First of all, I truly think they're gonna be one of the worst teams in the NFL. And that's okay because they picked their lane. They let Khalil Mack walk and Akeem Hicks walk and Allen Robinson walk, like did nothing to improve this team in terms of free agents. Nothing. And they didn't have a first round pick. So they were gonna pick their lane in a year from now they'll have hundred and fifty million in cap space and hopefully a top five pick. So Justin has to have at least a decent season. Like we have to look and our eyes have to go, Yeah, that dude's a really good player. They just gotta get help for him around him. They just gotta keep him alive. I don't know if that offensive line can protect him. I don't know who he's throwing to. I mean, you know, all of a sudden the people around here who are, you know, they would think the Bears are going to win the Super Bowl. If I was playing for them, there are people, oh, Byron Pringle and Equinini and St. Brown, these dudes, they're going to just fall out. I don't see that. I don't. So we'll see where this team goes. There is pressure on Justin, and I think he's up to it. I think he had a comment to the media recently. He said, I know what I'm in for, and I'm built for this. So, let's go. 
Leave it. All right. There you go, man. There you have it. That's your boy, David Kaplan. That's the video I tried to play before, but we had to circle back around and get it another way. But that's your boy, David Kaplan, man, for I don't know what station David Kaplan's on, NBC Chicago, or one of those outlets, man, discussing the question or answering the question from Keyshawn Johnson. Is there pressure on Justin Fields, right? Now, inherently, because he's the quarterback, of an NFL franchise, of course there's pressure on him, right? There's pressure on every, all 32 quarterbacks in the NFL. So to, you know, single Justin out as there being pressure on him, inherently because of the position he plays, there's pressure, right? Is there additional pressure on Justin? Um, I would have to disagree if there's additional pressure on Justin to be great. No, I believe the, the 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 franchise has come in, the new regime has come in. They set up a system around Justin, right? They brought in a coaching staff and a GM that's going to build a system around Justin. They have drafted to bolster the defense, and I'll get into why I think that's important, more important here in a minute. Right. And they freed up some salary cap money. Right. But also they brought in a coordinator that's going to design an offense and build an offense around Justin. Right. So. Is there pressure specifically on Justin? I would disagree and say no. All 32 quarterbacks in the NFL have pressure, but also there's shared pressure on this entire regime the GM, the coaching staff, right? The offensive coordinator and Justin. So it's kind of equally distributed, the pressure. I don't think there's pressure on any one individual out of that crowd more than the other person. Now, here's the thing. Are there expectations, right? Do the fans, do we the fans, Chicago Bears fans have great expectations for Justin? Absolutely, right? We haven't necessarily had a franchise quarterback uh, in the duration throughout the history of this franchise. So we have great expectations for Justin, right? Um, we want to see Justin put up the numbers. So um, while I'm at this, do me a favor. Let me know what you think Justin's stat line for this upcoming season will be. Um, I'm predicting that he'll probably, um, I want him to see about over a little bit over 3,500 uh, yards passing, Right about 26 to 27 TDs, and I'll say, uh, you know, 10 to 12 interceptions, right? So 20, 25 to 27 TDs, 10 to 12 interceptions, over 3,500 yards passing, uh, and then let's say about 5 to 750 in rushing, right? I think there'll be a nice balance there. I think he takes the step. Um, he takes the step this year. But also I have realistic expectations because I know he's a second year quarterback, but this is essentially his rookie season, right? Because he has a new coach, head coach, new offense coordinator, whole new team, right? Over 50% of this roster is turned over. So do me a favor. As you watch this video, let me know what you believe Justin Fields stat line is going to be for this upcoming season in the comments on the playback, even on the playback. If you're watching this video, let me know what you believe Justin's stat line will be for the season. I believe, again, I disagree with Cap. I don't believe there's overly immense pressure on Justin. I believe it's shared pressure. It's pressure on Eberflus. It's pressure on Ryan Poles. It's pressure on the offensive line. There's pressure on the wide receivers, tight ends. Like, everybody is on a prove-it deal. We have a bunch of one-year uh, deals out there with certain players. They're on prove it deals and situations where their jobs are in, aren't even cemented. So uh, we're definitely, um, I believe it's shared pressure, right? Um, I'll get to some of the comments when we do the down in the DM section. Hopefully that video plays, but if not, we're going to work our way around it, but definitely want to capture some of you to call. So I don't believe there's, you know, immense or this like crazy pressure. One of the things that annoys me about, about, you know, some of the regional 
mainstream media people um, and also the national media. I think what's, what annoyed me about Cap's uh, comment here was the fact that we always question, like, where are the national media getting their narratives from, right? And it hit home for me, right? They only go to certain people uh, in regional media to get, you know, what the scoop is on the ground. And they they go to the same people all the time. And somebody somebody made the comment on Twitter, actually DM me and replied to my comment on Twitter. Like, you know, I, I did I did a hashtag stop the cat, man, um, in response to this comment right here. Um, and they said, you know, everybody has their own narratives, perspectives, its own, its own, its own, the other national media, DIY media and so on and so forth. Yeah, that's great. I don't have a problem with people having an opinion and or takes after all. I don't I don't work in Hallis Hall. I do on I, I get on social media here as well and have an opinion. But the the problem I have with some of these takes are is is this, right? If you're a journalist, if you're a journalist, your job is to do some sort of research, right? And come up with varying perspectives, right? I, where's the work? My my whole point is where's the work? You have guys on DIY media. We'll actually go out and research players. Pull. I, I have more respect for the stat boys, the guys that focus on stats. They'll even though I don't, I don't like PFF stats. Right, it alone, like using coming up with a take using PFF stats alone. I don't necessarily care for that because I don't believe stats tell you the entire story. Right, and if you don't have or don't know the intricacies of football. Uh, you have never been in a locker room. You never coached the team, right? You don't understand how things work. Um, you know, stats alone don't tell a complete story, right? They they can go along with other commentary, and they'll help fill out a story. Um, but I still have more respect for those guys, for these guys that just come on a show and says, oh, you know, yeah, I get I granted we didn't we we did get free agents, but we didn't get splash guys. We did get we did have a good draft, but we didn't sign splash guys. So it goes back to what I've been saying the whole time, right? The system is going to be the star. So yeah, the pressure, actually, with that being said, right, we've always been saying on this channel that the system is the star. So with that being said. That goes along with me saying that the pressure is not necessarily on Justin. Ryan Pose and Matt Eberflus and the staff have taken the pressure off the players and said, listen, we're going to design a system where the pressure is on the system and not on the players. You guys, the system that we designed, you guys just got to plug in and do your job and go out and play. So, so the risk is actually on Ryan Pose. The risk is actually on Matt Eberflus and Luke Getze and Alan Williams, the pressure is actually on those guys because they have been brought in to design a system whereby we can draft players into, not necessarily name-bearing players, but players that can come into and they can plug and do a specific role or job within that system that'll make this a successful franchise for a long time. What Cap is doing is doing what all the negative Bears fans do, and they jump on the fact that we're not signing these splash players. Remember the comment about no name brand cereal, right? The system is the star. We're not signing these name brand players that's going to be prima donnas, that's going to come in and destroy your locker room, destroy your culture, and we're not signing these guys that's going to end up costing us in salary cap down the road. That's why I have a problem with what your boy Cap is saying right there. And that's my opinion on that, man. So um, I'm going to get to some of y'all's comments and responses to that in the comment just in a few seconds. I want to highlight um, what some of you guys are saying. And we're going to hopefully be able to do a DM section media intro. But let me know what your thoughts are on Cap's comments, overly emphasizing that Justin Fields has all this pressure on him to, you know, light up the NFL this year um, that, you know, we've done nothing to help them. Uh, we're, we're the, the one that got me was we're going to be one of the worst 
teams in the NFL. How can you say that when we lost, we won six games last year with Matt Nagy at the helm, calling plays and running the team, right? I think having Nagy out of the building is worth at least two more wins. Um, you know, I just think it is. I think I think having Nagy out of the building equates to at least two more wins for us in my logic. But let me know in the comments. I see y'all shout me out, Coach uh, SunTrust, SunTaurus 9, Peace fam. I see you, my guy. Uh, shout out to Sun, Sun Taurus 9. Uh, but yeah, man, we'll, we'll get to some of these comments and we'll jump straight into that right now. But let me know. I'll continue to read comments as we jump into the DM section. And then it goes down in the dim. It go down. It go down in the dim. All right, y'all know I can't play that thing too long, or else YouTube is gonna tag me. But listen, let's get into some of these comments, man. I appreciate you guys coming to chat. Don't do me a favor as you come in. Don't forget to like, man. Run the algorithm up so we can get more people up in here. I want to address more comments in the comment section. Let's get this thing busted, man. Vincent Bernal says, so many TDs last year were dropped or called off. I don't expect that to happen often um, this year. And I agree with you, Vince. Here's the thing. Not only were TDs dropped and called off, but let's talk about, um, and I hit on it a little while ago, just the awful play design, man. Um, one of my videos I put out, I talked about how Nagy um, didn't match his protections numbers with the uh, distance of the routes of the wide receivers, right? We had wide receivers running 15, 20 yard routes in five man protection. Um, the game that I used as an example of that was the Cleveland game. Justin was getting murdered back there. Uh, Cleveland broke a sack record for a game, I believe, against Justin um, because Nagy wanted to run 15, 20 yard routes with five man protection. Um, although I think five man protection is key um, to uh, being successful. Uh, for a lot of teams, and I'm going to hit on that when we get into some of the playbook. Um, but I don't believe – I believe you have to properly evaluate your offensive line and understand what their capabilities are before going into season to know who on that offensive line you're going to have to help with chips and uh, uh, delays and basically keeping guys in uh, on – the uh on, on uh, up front so as far as helping out the offensive line are you going to have to keep a tight end in and on and help out a certain tackle or guard are you going to have to use a running back to help in and chip because um you don't believe in that particular offensive lineman holding up in protection for longer developing plays right that's football 101 so yeah i think luke getsy is going to have a better overall plan and understanding how that works right protection plans i really believe Nagy did not know how to protect, how to design protection plans when it comes to offensive line and match that protection plan with uh, his route combination. So shout out to you, Vince, for that comment. I appreciate you chiming in. Uh, I, I see another comment for you, but I want to catch somebody else. Uh, James Ford says they go to people um, that feed into their thoughts on how bad the team is going to be. And it's all on Justin and he got it. I agree with you, James. I just, you know what I'm saying? Like the reason why, one of the reasons why I wanted to point out that comment, because I disagree with this regime's approach to how they're approaching to this team. But also, again, to point out the difference between uh, the, the regional, national regional and Bears DIY media. And my challenge to even the DIY media outlets out there, and I support uh, most of y'all. Um, uh, my challenge to you guys is to not do that. Like, let's not carry on the same, uh, narratives that the regional and national media guys do look like Swifty always says, bro, it's knowledge over nar narrative. And my, my response to that is, it's me, it's research over me search, bro. It's not that hard. Well, you can go out, we have the whole internet, right? You can research PFF stats. If that's all you have to work with, you can look up players, you can do your own digging, uh, but that's why I encourage you guys to either follow Bears, Chicago Bears 360, or follow Swift, uh, Swifty on his channel because um, Swifty definitely does the research, and I come back 
and do a lot of the X's and O's breakdowns. So appreciate that comment, James. I totally agree with you. Uh, let's catch some more comments here in the section. Rico Pesos, when you spend big money in free agency, it's because you haven't drafted well. Man, what do I add to that? What do what can I add to that? I have nothing else to add to that. I, I that's it in a nutshell. The, the 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 big money free agents is a band-aid because you don't have an approach. You don't have a philosophy when it comes to draft. You don't have a, a philosophy when it comes to managing the salary cap, drafting to maintain and manage that salary cap over the long term, right? And you don't have an overall football philosophy and system and, and uh, 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 identity on how you would like to play football, right? So you, you go out there and just get guys a la Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy and you think, you know, just it's Jimmy's and Joe's, right? No. And there's a, there's a coach in saying that, that, that it's always it's Jimmy's and Joe's over X's and O's. I never prescribed to that. I never prescribed that because I believe even at the NFL le le level, you can coach, you can still coach guys up to do specific things that you want to do within your system, right? Um, and think about the great franchises, the, the New Englands of the world, uh, the Bill Belichicks, um, and even, the, dare I say, uh, the, the, the Green Bays from the past who developed systems and draft guys, drafted guys that fit that system. And they weren't superstars. They weren't name brand players. They were guys that fit a specific role and came in and did their thing. Uh, I like this. I'm going to capitalize on the right. S. Schroeder says the system should turn some good players into name brand players. I agree with you. Everybody rants and raves about Devontae Adams at Green Bay and lighting the, 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 the league up after going to Green Bay. First of all, think about this. We got Devontae Adams' position coach as our offensive coordinator. Second of all, think about this. Who was Devontae Adams before Green Bay got him, Right. They developed Devontae Adams into being the player he was. He didn't hit the league as a superstar. He came from Fresno State as a second round, I believe. High second round draft pick. What do we have? We have seconds and thirds, right? We have seconds and thirds. We have later draft picks. We have guys that can be developed. Mooney, right? Uh, Velas Jones Jr., Byron Pringle, right? We have uh, uh, more. We have guys that fit that bigger, more physical wide receivers with speed that we can develop um, to be superstars in this system. So I'm not totally down on what we're doing. This is, like I said, it's just easier to be negative and sometimes negative allows clickbait. It allows for more views or whatever. I don't know what the, uh, uh, you know, I don't know what the approach, I don't know what the agenda of some of these guys are. SunTrust, Sun Torres, I keep I want to call you Sun Trust. Um, thinking about my money. Uh, Jay feels about to let it ride. Structure leadership is vital as a QB. The Bears have that and then some. I agree with you, Sun Torres Nine. This is the whole thing. Remember, bro, we're saying this. This is the thing. The catchphrase that we're using here on Chicago Bears 360 is the system is the star. The system is the star. The system is the star. Listen, we're going to get into uh, some of that. Um, my boy Swift, he's in the, in, the, in the comment section. He's going to join us in a minute. Um, hopefully he can jump in here. I see him pop on the screen. Let me take care of some more of these comments real fast. And hopefully Swifty can join us uh, before we get in the playbook. Or even if we jump into the playbook. Um, I know Swifty has some great info for me. He has, I know he has some great questions uh, for me. And um, we're going to we're going to kind of volley off each other um, in, in as far as this playbook is concerned. Do me a favor. When we jump into the playbook, we're going to pay attention to what the comments are saying, the sections, your feedback in the sections. And we want to get some ideas from this playbook because you guys ask great questions, man. Um, we ask great questions and it gives us ideas on how to further develop 
and build out the playbook. So let's get into it, man. Y'all see what it is. It's Coach T's playbook or Coach T's, Coach T's version of what I believe is going to be a Luke Getzey's playbook, man. So do me a favor. Do me a favor. This is something special that we're doing. Um, now, the reason why I wanted to do this, man, is because, check it out. This is the dog days of summer, right? And everybody's getting, you know, this is the boring time. This is, you know, we've broken camp, OTAs, right? We haven't got into the summer July practices and August practices. I believe pats don't go on until August, right? And, you know, a lot of the media outlets are, are starving for something to talk about. And the default is going to Matt Nagy and talking about Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace and how bad they were. But I, again, I'm always want to give y'all something different. So I could have just been like, oh, you know, put out videos and look how bad it was last year, blah, 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 blah. No, we're not doing that here. We're going to give y'all some fresh content. We're going to give y'all something new to talk about. So I said, hey, I got a little bit of knowledge about designing playbooks. So why not? Get my people in here, my field soldiers, and we're going to develop a playbook, a Luke Getsy style playbook. So we started talking about this last week, right? We started talking about, we started developing this playbook last week, right? I started talking about power concepts and how I believe uh, Luke Getsy's uh, run game. Now, this is the thing we're going to do. We're going to focus on the run concepts first. And then I'm going to build it into play action and we'll get into some of the passing concepts later. Right. So last week we started talking about some of what I believe is going to be Luke Getsy's philosophy or concepts, not the exact plays. The plays I draw are my plays that fit his concepts um, that I feel like he's going to use. Right. And I have a surprise for you. all uh, After doing some more research and listening to the media takes. Coach T is reversing his thoughts on a lot of this talk about outside zone, inside zone. Yeah, I know it. I know it. Y'all can go ahead and cook me in the comments section, right? I didn't. I never said that we weren't going to run outside zone. I just said we ran outside zone some last year. We ran out inside zone some last year. It's no different than what we did last year holistically. Concept wise, I think the difference that we're going to see, the difference that we're going to see is a lot of the the difference will be the power concepts. Right. So we designed this play. Right. So for the catch you guys up to catch you guys up, we designed this play. Um, we designed the offense. We started building the offense. Right. So to catch you guys up um, to what this stuff means. Right. So I asked you guys a question. Give me a famous uh, number 21 in football. Somebody gave me uh, Swifty gave me the name prime after Deion Sanders. Right. So we call this personnel group. Um, we call it call this personnel group prime for 21 personnel. So prime personnel group is 21 personnel, two running backs, one tight end. The formation here is pro left. eye, right. The pro left. eye is the tight end to the lined up to the left. Right. Tight end to the left. And the play is 35 power. Power is a staple of a power concept. That's where the tight name or the title comes from. And all power is, is pulling guys from one side of formation. So if you can see this guard right here, right, pulling this guard from one side of the formation to the strength side of the formation to give yourself additional blockers. That's what makes it power it's an aggressive style uh, of run game and, and i believe this is where kyle shanahan gets his uh, reputation for being physical from right physical offense physical run game allows and gets these big guys moving from one side of the formation to the other it gets them on the move pulling up in gaps and gets them big guys moving fast Versus smaller guys, linebackers, safeties, and corners, right? So if you notice the design of this play, and I'm just recapping, um, the fullback leads up on the outside linebacker and or defensive end. Right now I have it going versus a 3-4 defense. 
So the first thing will happen, even though this software doesn't do it this way, the first thing that happens, fullbacks explodes off the ball at the snap of the ball, leads up on the outside linebacker or defensive end. Everybody blocks down, right? So you see the tight end to block down, tackles block down, everybody blocks down, guard pulls front side, gets up in the gap, and the running pack takes a jab step to the opposite side, quarterback reverses out opposite of the direction of the play, and then he cuts back. So it's a jab step out, then he cuts back into the hole. I'll animate this for y'all so y'all can see it. The animation ain't perfect, but it works, right? Boom. All right, I'll run that back one more time. See the guard pulling up in the hole, fullback leading. The corner, the running back should have one man to beat, right? This is the play. I always remind you guys to give you reference. This is the play that um, Marshawn Lynch ran versus uh, New Orleans in the infamous earthquake run, right? This is 35 power. That's at least what I call it. I don't know what they called it. Now, here's the thing. This is what Kyle Shanahan or maybe Luke Jesse would do in this play. They wouldn't just line up and run this play like this, right? This is, this is the elementary way of running it. One of the things that Nagy failed at doing is adding um, – yeah, yeah, I'm going to get into that. Great, 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 great comment. I was reading uh, Curtis Newberry's comment. I'm going to get into that, Curtis. Great comment. I'm going to do that. And this is exactly the point I was getting into. So one of the things that Nagy failed to do uh, uh, with his offense is he would do he would do exactly – run plays exactly like this. He would come up, break the huddle, come up to the line of scrimmage, and just line up and run plays, right? One of the things that Kyle Shanahan does masterfully is he always gives you some window dressing, right? He always gives you some window dressing. And what I mean by window dressing, you see up in the corner right here, I have wrinkles. Orbit, orbit, flee, fly, and reverses, right? Those are the standard wrinkles that I would use if I'm designing my own play. So say I don't want to just line up and run 35 power. I'm going to put in a wrinkle, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to design an orbit, right? I'm going to design an orbit in this situation. So the way to make this work the correct way, we're going to have to move some players around. So let's take let's take uh let's take our tight end that want to cooperate software don't it? all right it wants to wants to hone in on the running backs there we go let's take our tight end uh Let's take, uh, I'll tell you what, let's do it this way. Let's take our X off, right, and let's put our Z on because the rules say we can only have five men in the back, four men in the backfield. So one, two, three, four. We got our Z off, our X off, right? And I'm going to show y'all a wrinkle, uh, uh, a Kyle Shanahan-style wrinkle um, that will add to this play to make it more dynamic. So, we're going to do an orbit, orbit motion. We're going to send our X. We're going to send our X in motion. Let's see if this draws correctly. Come on, man. All right. Let's give a uh, plane. We're going to send our X in motion. So your quarterback to give some kind of motion signal to send your X in motion. And we're going to do an orbit with this guy. Orbit is... Matter of fact, let's bring this in some. Y'all gotta, y'all gotta work with me or be patient with me. This thing on software. So let's do a, uh, let's do a motion. Let's motion them. Now I would call this flee because he's flee is short motion. Fly is flee is short motion. Fly is long motion. Right. So I would call. X flee orbit, X flee orbit, right? And then I would actually give this guy snap of the ball. Dang it. All right, we just motioned him. Y'all see what we did right there, right? 
And then I'm just going to orbit him here. I'm going to orbit him at the snap of the ball. We're going to orbit him around the play. All right. We're going to orbit him around the play. This is just to give it some eye candy. Y'all see that? I don't like this first line. I, I want to remove it. But that's 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 the that's the concept. So you're not just going to stand up. You're just not going to cut a line of scrimmage and run the play like Matt Nagy did. You're going to add some eye candy. So you're going to come up to the line of scrimmage. You're going to call in the huddle. You're going to call. Let's let's see what this call is going to be. Let's let's adjust the call now to what we just did. So initially it was just pro left 35 power. But now we're going to call. Um, we're going to call. We're going to call pro left. We're going to call pro left X X flee orbit X. So the X is going to flee first. Flee orbit, flee orbit, 35 power. And that's to give your safeties and linebackers something to look at to keep their mind. Because if you just stand up and run the play, they're going to be able to just tee off and do what they do, right? You, a thinking defense, a thinking defense is a, uh, is a bad defense. A thinking defense is a slow defense. So you're trying to get... Those linebackers, um, you want to get those linebackers off their keys and off their reads. You want to keep their, get their eyes busy on something other than focusing on reading what they should be reading um, to add a little confusion to it, right? So there you go right there. Let's get that motion right in the drawing. So, yeah, so we're going to go up and we're going to fix this. We're going to add some wrinkles to it. Instead of just lining up, we're going to go. We're going to go X, flee, orbit, 35 power. See that simple play? We start with the simple play, but we added wrinkles to it. So, And, and most of the time in a Kyle Shanahan, uh, let's call it uh, David Moore, uh, D Joe Moorhead, let's maybe, maybe, may see this with Lou Getsy, right? Most of the times with these kind of offense, what you want to do is get the motion and get the action going opposite of the, direct, the direction you're running the actual play. So we're running the ball left, but I want to show some kind of motion that goes opposite to get these linebackers looking over here somewhere. I want to get their eyes worried about this eye, this, this guy going in, in, in motion right here. Now, what do you do with that? That's a setup play. Because if the defense doesn't respect the the flea motion and orbit, right, you, 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 you have two options you can do right there, right? You have your basic 35 power off the orbit motion, but now you can run the reverse. You can fake the 35 power. So, so let's see another play that we build off of this. Now we can, th we can fake the 35 power. Now we get to go. Fake 35, new play. Play two. Fake. Fake uh, 35 power. And you would call it whatever, but I'm just coming up with this on the fly. We will fake the 35 power. We call it Z. Uh, uh, X reverse. All right. Again, terminology is up to the coach, right? It's up to the offensive coordinator. But this is how you build on it, right? So first you have the basic 35 power play. Then you add in the fleet orbit, right? Motion. Now you go fake 35 power, Z reverse. What can you do off of that? A third play. This is this is what Nagy was lacking. No, no build up. No, a third play is uh now you can go. You can fake both. Uh, you can fake both. So you have your X flea, X flea orbit. Fake. Uh, let's call this fake thirty-five. And then you go with your uh, play action. 
right? Now, I'll get into the play action plays here in a minute, right? I'll get into the past stuff later, right? That's kind of starting to bleed into my play a little bit, right? But y'all get the point. Let me move this up. It's getting messy here. But y'all get the point, right? So that's how you build. You build off of it. You build. You build off of the basic concept, right? That's what having an offensive philosophy and identity do does for you as an offensive play caller. That's why it's important for you to have a philosophy. If you don't have a philosophy of concepts, then you can't build a story. As a play caller, what you're doing is building a story. I'm going to show you in this game, I'm going to show you 35 power, but you could get Z, Z fleet orbit. You could get the reverse. You can get play action. I'm going to show you, I'm, I'm going to show you smoke and mirrors all game long. I'm going to keep you off balance all day long. You know, you're, you're never going to know where it's coming from and what I'm coming with. Right. And that's, that's during the game, but also that's week to week in the NFL season, because guess what? Other teams are scouting your tape. So if you run a basic 35 power play on week one, week two, you need to add a wrinkle. You need to add X flee Z orbit, right? Week three, you need to add the play action. So you can go in the game. Now, usually as a play caller, what happens is if I'm killing them with basic 35 power, I'm not going to pull all my bags out of my, my, my toolbox in that game, Right? I'm not going to pull all my bags, all my bags, out of, all my tricks out of that bag during that game. I'm not going to throw everything on film for the next week's opponent for them to see it. So if I'm killing you with 35 power and I don't have to show you anything else and you never adjust to it, then I'm going to keep killing you with 35 power. Right. If now. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Let's have a conversation. Let's have a conversation. What happens what happens if you adjust to my basic 35 power? What happens if they, let's, let's move this up here. What happens if I kill, I'm killing them. Let me see if I can change the font here real fast. Oh, here we go. Text size. All right, here we go. What happens if I'm killing them with a basic 35 power? Right? The basic power play. Boom. I'm killing them with that. And they adjust. Say, say they roll a safety down in the box. Y'all killing me with this 35 power. I'm going to roll a safety down in the box. I'm going to go to an odd number coverage. I'm going to go to cover three. I'm going to roll the free safety up to the top single high. I'm going to back my corners off because they got outer thirds. Right? Cover three would be this guy has this third. This guy has... The middle third, this guy has outer thirds. I'm going to roll the safety down in the box, extra man, because you're killing me. You're killing me on 35 power. What do you do as an offensive play call? Glad you asked. I go to my counter concepts. My counter concepts, right? Let me change this. Counter concepts. So you run power, but what if in the game... What if in the game, the defense adjusts, you're killing them with power. What do you do as an offensive play caller from a run perspective? Then you go to your counter concepts. So this is something else I believe we'll see in a Luke Gessie's offense. And honestly, Kyle Shanahan actually uses inside-outside zone, and he uses counter concepts to a, as a response to defenses adjusting to his inside his outside zone. So instead of running power here in Kyle's offense, he's going to run outside zone. He's going to run a lot of outside zone. And then his response to defense is doing what I just described here is he goes to the counter concept. So this is just a little bit philosophy change, right? A philosophy difference, right? I run power and then I go to counter, right? But Kyle runs outside zone and then he goes to his counter concepts. So let's look at this counterplay that I've drafted up here, right? Right. Let me let me take some of this stuff out. And for today, we'll focus on counter concepts, and we may end it with that. 
depending on how much company we get. Uh, edit, cut. I'm taking the blocking out so I can redraft this play. Um, I want to. I want to. I want to draft it from scratch. This is. I, I pre-drafted this play, right? I was doing too much. All right. We're going to draft up this basic counterplay. Then we'll add the wrinkles, the eye candy to the counterplay um, from there. All right. So the last play, let's go back and take a look at the power play. Power play, you're pulling, you're pulling the guard from the weak side to the strong side, leading up on the fullback, right? The defense adjusts by bringing this free safety in the box, right, and shifting their coverage to a cover three. They want to put additional men in the box because you're tearing them up, right? What is your response as an offensive coordinator? You got to have a counterplay in there, right? Now, what do you do with that? How do you do that? Notice how the strength of the formation is pro left eye, tight end to the left or the right, I mean to the left. The defense just pulled this safety down in here as an additional man in the box to stop your run. Now they got an eight-man box. What do you do? You can do a number of things, right? But we're just going to talk about what do you do in the run concept or the run, the run game, right? Now you would go to your counterplay because what did they do? They put more bodies, but they shifted the bodies to the strength of the formation, right? Now, if you count the number of bodies on this side of the line of scrimmage, one, two, three, four. How many is on this side? Three, right? It's three on this side, four on this side. So why would you run up in there? You got three guys. You got one, two, three, four guys to block four, five guys. It's a mismatch. It's a numbers mismatch. You're, you're at a disadvantage. Why would you do that? Right? It's not smart football. So how do you how do you counter that? How do you counter what the adjustment they made? You counter it by exactly that. You run the counterplay. Now, you can run the guard tackle counter, which I'm going to show you now. You can do a guard fullback counter. You can do a guard wide counter or a guard tight end counter, right? You can do a counter with a combination of players. You can do a, com uh, a counter with a combination of blockers with the guard X, your slot, and your Z, depending on how, many, how you design the play, right? You can get as creative as you want in designing this play, but I'm going to show y'all the guard tackle counter or counter trade as what a lot of people call it, right? They call it counter counter or counter trade, right? So instead of us running to the strength of the formation where they've adjusted the four bodies to, see these four bodies or five bodies, five bodies to the strength, the nose, the backers, the strong safety, down in the box, you tackle outside linebacker. Why would I run into that mess? I'm going to run opposite of it. How am I going to do that? I'm going to do Similar to what we did with power, I'm going to block down. Oh, crap. I got the wrong stop. I'm going to block down. Block down. And I'm going to kick out. He's going to lead up on him. Boom. Boom. He's going to lead up on him. We're going to lead this tackle right here free. We're going to lead this tackle right here free. We're going to let him run free, and I'm going to show you why in a minute. Boom. We let him run because we're going to cut this guy off. Actually, this is going to be a uh, – let's let's make this a guard, a guard fullback counter. Let's make this a guard fullback. So I take back what I said about guard tackle. I'll show y'all the guard tackle at another another day, right? And we're gonna cut this guy off. All right, y'all see how we blocking that? Something to that nature, right? Snap of the ball. Snap of the ball. Your guard pulls from the strength side to the weak side and smashes that tackle. Your fullback fakes like he's running, like he's leading up on the uh, outside linebackers, like he's going, 
Make it look as similar to the power play as possible. So fullback steps in like he's going to run and go towards this guy, but he's actually cutting back behind and he's following, he's following the guard up into the hole, following the guard up into the hole, right? And you're actually going to run your play. You got some feet. Welcome to the welcome to the feed, uh, Swifty. But you got I got some feedback. You got feedback? Yeah, it's gone now. <laughs> oh, it must have been from my mic muted. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. So let's get you in here, my guy. Y'all welcome, Swifty, to the show. Let me get this thing going real fast. Work out the technicality. Wake up my mouse here. Uh. Here we go. Welcome to the show, Swift. Hey, what up, what up, what up, what up? So I'm, I'm going over the counterplay real fast. Um, you can jump in there and... and oh, I've been watching. All right, so so we blocked, we blocked everybody except for that tackle. We pulled the guard from the strong side to the weak side to trap that tackle. The fullback fakes like he's leading up on the outside linebacker, but he actually follows the guard through the hole. Now what happened? See what you actually did from a blocking standpoint. We had a disadvantage over here where we had five guys to block with three, but now we have one, two, three. We have one, two, three, four. Now we got five on three, and now you have a numbers advantage. That's the response to if you're beating them with the power play or the outside zone. The outside zone. Say you're killing them. We'll go back and draft outside zone here in a minute. And I'll, and I'll describe that. So let me finish off, and I'll put the running back's motion in here. So running back basically goes, boom, fakes like he's going outside. Dang it. Why did I screw that up? Okay. He fakes like he's going outside. He's going strong side. Chad puts his foot in the ground, hits the hole right around here, some right here. And we're going to call this. I got this name. Uh, I got this inappropriately name. We're going to call this one, three, uh, uh, two, four. We're going to call this 34. Right side is even. Left side is odd. Right. So the other play was 35 counter because it was a third back going through the five hole. This is the third back going through the two, four hole. So this is going to be 34 counter. This is the response to Teams pulling a safety down in the box to load the box with an eighth man to the strength of your formation, right? Standard. This is football 101. Now, again, what's going to make it look fancy is all the wrinkles that Luke would add to this play. So remember what we did with the power play, how we dressed it and wrinkled up or fancied up the power play. We didn't just line up and run the play. We added some eye candy to it, right? So let's add some eye candy to this. I'm not just going to stand up here and run 35 counter, right? 30, 34 counter. I'm going to put a man in motion. I'm going to put a man in motion. Let's go Z flee orbit. Z flee. And we're going to orbit him. Orbit. We're going to go orbit motion off of this. Because, again, now that I got an orbit going off of this, I could hand the ball off on the 35, uh, 30, 34 counter. I could run a reverse. I could fake both and run play action. Right? So that's the response to the power play. That's counter concepts in, it, in its essence. All counters are, again, is running, pulling bodies from the weak, from the strong side of the formation, the strong side is the left side here in this case because we have a tight end and a fullback here. The defense adjusts by bringing an additional man so they ain't getting their heads beat in. So now we're going to counter and we're going to pull bodies from the strong side to the weak side to give ourselves a number advantage. That's counter one-on-one. And remember, you can run guard tackle counter. You can run GF counter in this case with the guard and the fullback like I did. Or you can do a GY counter. You can run a G. Uh, you can run a counter with the guard and the tight end. So say if we're in Y off, so we pull the tight end off the line of scrimmage, and instead of pulling the fullback, 
I can pull the guard and the tight end and I have the fullback lead up on the outside guy to fill that void and vacancy. There's a number of ways. Um, number of, There's a plethora of combinations. What, what offensive coordinators tend to do is when they watch film, they see which guys are the best guys to pull on that on that given week, right? So say say if you if a team is a primarily uh 34 defense, 34 defense, right? Usually your guards are going to be free. So that'll be a good week to pull your guards, right? But you usually don't want to pull guys that guys have guys playing up head up on them, right? So if there's a guy playing head up on your guards, say if we were in a 4-3 defense, right? That that 3 technique that we're always talking about that we have on our team now, that three technique is a problem for a lot of power teams because that three technique could follow your guard. Say he's playing head up on your guard. He could follow your guard when he's pulling and make the play. That's actually what they teach. So if you're the guard and the team pulls the guard, they just teach you to get in his hip, hip pocket. He's going to carry you straight to the ball. And you get to blow the play up in the backfield. I did that a lot of times when I played football. What you got? What you got on that? What's what? What you think about that, Smith? Man, I love the counterplay. Uh, one thing I was when I'm looking at chat over here is they uh somebody mentioned how well Khalil Herbert fits with that with those kind of counterplays and the outside zone. Yeah. And someone else countered and said Demo does too. But man, I was watching some tape on uh, Khalil Herbert the other day, and his vision, patience, and burst. I think he could actually be better than Demo in time, especially in this kind of scheme, especially yeah. those counter runs. He's just so patient. And yeah. Demo's patient, too. Demo's patient and powerful. And one of the things, I think the reason why Demo gets so overrated, because he breaks all those tackles, right? Right. But the problem with it is he doesn't have the burst once he breaks the tackle right. to do much after that. He'll break, yeah. he'll break three tackles, but he'll only get one more yard. Right. Whereas Khalil Herbert can break one tackle and then burst into a seam and get you an extra 15, 20. Right. And that's right. something I think we'll see in this scheme. And I think this year it's one of the storylines I want fans to watch as we, we move into more of a power run and an outside zone is the emergence of Khalil Herbert. Cause right now I see a lot of fans like, Oh man, Demo's our whole offense. And I love Demo. I don't want to, yeah. not trying to get the Demo, uh, fans mad i love demo but yeah, yeah, yeah. Her herbert's gonna herbert's gonna show us some things this year i see it coming no I, I i agree with you i think they both um i think they're both a good fit for both power and zone concepts i think your point you nailed the point exactly i think with with, with um i think with demo the the run breaking ability is there i think this is what i would do right this is what i would do between between the uh from from 20 to 20 i will let them share reps but when we get in the goal line i'm putting david in there right and i'm running either one i'll run zone i'll run power because you in the goal line it's just hard to get yards and and that's kind of what goes into personnel decisions right so you're like hey demo if we inside the 20 or better yet if we're inside the 10 you're in the game Inside the 15, you're in the game. Don't come out because I need that. I need that. Uh, I need that. That tackle breaking ability inside the 15. Now watch this. Con you know, contrary uh, counter to that. 20 to 20. Hey, we're sharing reps, but I'm giving I'm giving Khalil Herbert a few more reps. 20 to inside. You know, 20 to 20 outside because guess what? If I run power or counter in the middle of the field, say we're on the 50 yard line. And you break it one for 20, watch how that works. You break from one for 20, 25, you get us in the red zone, you tired anyway. Come on in, Demo. Let's go to work. You see what I'm saying? That's that's yeah. that's that's why your position coaches, that's why your position coaches, your whole offensive staff have to be keen in and in tune with what's going on with the team. That's why your offensive coordinator has to coach, the offense coordinator has to coach his staff and his position coaches to understand the concept and the philosophy. And we actually, we think about this, you, you start to understand why things were off with Nagy and his, his, his staff. Like, 
Like it's starting to come out to me even right now. Like stuff that's not making sense. Like, yeah, like. You, oh, anyway. <laughs> I mean, Nagy I mean, just didn't have an identity. I mean, I, I know what you're trying to say. Nagy well, just and it, and it start, like I said, always tried to outsmart on, people. Yeah, it, it starts. Well, I said that like kind of before you came on, right? It, it starts with the identity. This is this is establishing your identity. Hey, I'm a I'm a outside zone. I'm a, I'm a power. I'm a counter guy. And I build my playbook because I gave you this look this week, but I put this wrinkle on it and I add it to. That's why I love when I heard Luke say in, in the press conference, he says, right now, all I'm teaching is concepts and I'll design the playbook to fit the players because he wants to teach. He wants to teach you basic 35 power first. That's a concept. Power is a concept. So once y'all understand, power is a concept. Zone is a concept, right? I'm going to teach y'all the concepts, but when I get my players in camp, oh, I see this player can do this, right? So let me add a Z, a Z fleet orbit in there because this is going to be scary to a defense. That's how you properly build um, uh, a playbook. So let me go back one step, Swift, here, because I, I did – power and counter to as an adjustment to um power but power i did some i did some digging and kyle shanahan uses a similar philosophy but not the same he uses some power concepts but you guys are right he runs a lot of outside zone but his counter his adjustment to defense adjusting to his outside zone is also the counter. So instead of going, he'll go power, he'll go outside zone, but he still has the same adjustments. He'll run, a, he'll run, he'll run. Say he runs power, he's killing them with that. Or let's let's take that back. Let's say he runs, he runs outside zone, he's killing them with that. He'll come back and go counter, right? Then if he still wants to run to the strength of the formation, he's like, okay, I'm gonna be a dog. I don't care. I don't care if you put nine men in the box. I'm trying to send a message. He'll still come back and go power and go counter again. Like it's crazy. His, his mind, like I've been watching a lot of Shanahan film. His mind is sick. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? He's like, I'm going to throw, I'm going to make it's you prepare the nuances, for everything. Yeah. So yep. I wanted, I wanted to show you can talk real fast. I wanted to show it's why. something that he does every year. He he adds more wrinkles to his run game. It's, it's crazy. It's detail oriented, and they he attacks every aspect and makes the defense prepare for every guy, even the fullback. And that's why they they do things on those same outside zones. Those right. are the same type of plays where they'll do the jet sweep with Debo, where they have that same motion that makes the defense look like they're doing the counter. Right. They have the offensive line moving like it's a counter. But instead of handing the counter, whoop, he comes back and hands it to Debo going the other way. And the defense is just like, yeah, that's the, so that's many the, things we got to prepare for. And it's that's wild. the play I just drafted right here. So that's the that's yep. the that's the uh, so we'll call this 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 will be the Z Z fleet orbit. Right. So we're running counter. But say we don't hand it to the running back. We'll run. The, we'll run the reverse orbit orbit reverse off of that. So we'll go snap before the snap of the ball. Hey, Z come in motion. He's jogging, snap of the ball, boom. We fake like we run the counter, and then we hand it to the guy on the orbit motion. But I want to show y'all this same concept off of same concept off of zone, right? So we run an outside zone. Now Kyle kind of runs his fullback as a straight eye, right? He likes to he likes to line up in a straight eye, right? I like because I don't coach professional ball. I like power eye. Power eye is just moving the fullback over, right? But he'll do the same thing, right? So say defenses, they adjust to the strength of your formation. We're going to go here. Somebody said Coach T's in his bag. Yes, I'm, I am home. I am. I, this, is, this is home. This is what I love to do. Uh, yes. Y'all don't know, man, how sad I was. If y'all could have seen my face. When I started drafting these plays and looking at doing this and realizing that I actually don't get to do this in season, I, I had a moment. <laughs> My wife was like, are you okay? <laughs> I was like, 
No, I miss, I miss being on the field. All right, so we're going to go outside zone. And I'll show you all the basic philosophy with outside zone, the running back, the running back assignments and how they do their reads. All right. So I won't block this whole thing up. I won't block the whole backside of it up. But y'all get the point. It's just guys stepping one direction. Now, I'm going to tell y'all why I don't care for zone and why I like power over zone. Y'all see this basic blocking for philosophy? It's just basic. It's like. Okay, snap of the ball. Now, here's the thing with, with outside zone that I'll give it credit on for being a strategic play call. It's it's call the play. The offense run, runs up, hurries up to the line of scrimmage, right, and snaps the ball and runs the play, right? But here's the thing. Where is the thinking? Where is me making my linebackers read and keys think? There's no thinking. There's no guys pulling across the formation to make the linebackers and the safeties think, right? So if I run this basic like this, then I don't like it. But I get why Kyle Shanahan and uh, McVay and them run it now because they add the wrinkles to it. So everybody's just stepping to the left, leading up to the left on their blocks. Now, the fullback is going to hit in here in the 1-3-5 hole, right, between the tackle and the tight end somewhere. That's where he's trying to make his his mark right here. Because actually what's supposed to be happen, happening right here is we're really for outside zone checking to see if this, tack, this tight end or whoever the outside man is can make this reach block and seal this outside linebacker. So he really wants to get – wrong way. Stop it. He really wants to get to his outside and pin him on the inside. But he's only going to be able to do that um, based off his alignment. Now, if he can get to that guy and get his hips turned where he can pin and create a seal right here, right? If he can create a seal, if he can create a seal where the running back can get out here, then it's going to be sweet, right? Running back's just going to bounce it to the outside. So the running back, his, his simple thing, his reads as simple as this, right? It's going to be a break, bend, or uh, what do they call it? It's three Bs they give it, and I can't remember it right now. So he has a – he basically has a bus. He has three reads. He's going to bust it outside. The seal happened. He busts it outside. Breaks, breaks, bus, or bend. That's it. Breaks, bus, or bend. Somebody put that in the chat because I won't remember it tomorrow. Breaks, bus, or bend. Breaks it outside. Bust it up inside. Or bend it back. I sound like a name to a twerk song. Bend it back. All right. My bad. I got a little distracted right there. Y'all following me? We good? Three reads right there. Outside zone. Boom. Break, bust, bend. Break, bust, bend. Right? Three reads. Tight end seals it, or the outside guy seals the outside linebacker, we're going to break it. Fullback is going up in the middle hole right there, right? So if there's no seal, the fullback just led up in the hole right there. So we're going to bust it. We're going to bust it right behind the fullback. If the fullback tried to bust it and there wasn't no busting, then we're going to bend it. It's just that simple, right? That's just that simple. Now, I, I, I said I don't care for outside zone because it's so simple. It doesn't get my linebackers and safeties thinking. But, again, what is the but wrinkle we've added to all these plays? The 49ers had a couple variations on this on that on that move you, uh, play you just drew up as well. They, they had one where instead of – the tight end still on the outside, they would yeah. have the tight end go upfield and the fullback would follow in front of the halfback to the outside and do the seal. Ah. But yeah. they have, it, it depends on the defense they're facing, but that's one of the right. variations I saw when they're running 21 personnel is they do those, they have the little intricacies. They'll, they'll change it up depending on 
what defense they're facing and how they can attack that specific defense. So you said the tight end, the tight end goes upfield. Fullback does the the fullback does the seal on the outside. He usually blocks the strong safety. Fullbacks goes upfield. No, the fullback does the seal. The fullback goes out. Ah, and tight end the tight end goes, goes upfield. Yeah, the tight end goes upfield for downfield blocking. I'm trying to think of what scenario I would do that. Probably, probably if it were in a four three. They ran it. Uh, when the they ran it a lot last year when the Jaguar against the Jaguars and the Jaguars would uh have their Sam linebacker line up off on the ball and it would kind of um it would get them outside they they would kind of stack the middle for that inside zone and this was their way of getting outside to the outside and just pretty much having one on ones with the running back on the outside. It it, it makes sense. Yeah, I'm, I would have to. It makes sense. But I know they probably got a good, great reason why they did it. So tight end goes, releases upfield. Yeah. So so maybe maybe doing that to the weak side. Was that a weak side zone? Now that would, uh, well, you're talking tight end, though. No, yeah, it was strong side, yeah. That's what they set up their counter with. That, basically, they, basically, they run the outside zone every week, but they never run the same outside zone. Yeah. They change up who uh, the blocking assignments and the looks every week, depending on what defense they're facing. That's right. that's where Kyle Shanahan's at. It's, it's a lot of teams they they do the same thing. No matter they're like we're going to do us, and we're going to we're going to beat the other team like with the power. But yeah. Shanahan's always changing like small intricacies, and it, it changes every year. Every year he adds more wrinkles and more more additions to the offense, and that's that's what's really excites me about Kyle Shanahan and yeah, running I, I would have to take like a look that. at probably send me that clip. I have to take a look at and, and take a look at and understand why he did it that way. But generally, generally you try to keep, you try to keep your blocking assignments the same. And I'll tell you why it, it allows the offensive lineman to play fast without thinking, right? The offensive line and tight ends. So what happens a lot of times is they'll give you defenses to give you a reduced look, or over or under look, right? So they'll slide a linebacker down. Say for instance case, like this is a this is a uh this is a three four look, but they'll 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 shade it in a way where it looks where it looks like a four three. So they actually bring a linebacker down on the line of scrimmage and it's more advantageous for you to say, all right, tight end just go release up the field and block upfield. And it's a better matchup for me to get my fullback out on the edge. Um, you know what I'm saying? He may just be a better blocker. It may just be a better personnel matchup on that end. But, um, yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. I just, I would, so, so I'm now so into him now, which I've always been, but now I'm really starting to get into details and try to understand the whys of what he does, what he, what he does. But, um, this is the basics of it though, right? You got a power play, you got a power play. Here, you got a power play with, I just, I just, y'all see I did the same wrinkle to all the plays. So you got a basic power play, but you have the wrinkle with the Z, Z flea orbit, right? But also you have a, a, where is the, where is the damn, I'm sorry, guys. Oh, (laughs) I'm sorry, guys. (laughs) No, I got the, I got the plays labor on. So you got the power play. You got the 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 um, zone and the blocking the blocking for zone and toss are similar, right? The philosophy for zone and toss similar. So you'll see Kyle do that as well, right? He'll he'll run some zone, but also he'll run quick toss. So he'll call a play. <laughs> what you laughing at? Swift? <laughs> he'll call a play in the huddle, and he'll and he'll go like he'll go like, hey, we might call muddle huddle, right? So we go, hey, muddle huddle. Uh, 35, 37 toss on one, right? Go. Run up to the line of scrimmage real fast and toss it real quick. Don't give your defense time to get set. And again, we just want to run a play real fast and get guys running, right? We want to tire guys out. So I'll run a toss in that case. But the concept is, again, both the same. Power, zone, and then they both come back with a counter off of that, right? So that's pretty much the three basics now. Maybe next week I'll show uh, I'll show 
Um, I'll show some wham. I'll show some wham concepts, which is actually the opposite. So you'll have your actually wham with wham. You'll have your tight end or a Z or X come in and blocking down on a lineman, usually the nose guard. I'll show some wham. We'll go into the gun. Maybe I'll show some bash concepts. Right. So after yeah. that, right, you're going to have power. Outside zone, toss, counter, bash is bash, wham, and zone read, right? So we got about three more weeks worth of run stuff. And then we're going to, I'm going to leave this stuff up here and we're going to build off of it. I probably have to reorganize a lot of this after we get all our plays. But we're going to build off that. I'm going to show wham, bash, uh, what else I say? Wham, bash, zone read, right? Zone read. And we're going to get into it. So, I hope this made sense for y'all. I have fun with this, right? This is y'all don't y'all don't understand how fun this is for me. The only thing missing is actual players to install this stuff with, right? Um, but yeah, man, what do you what do you what do you, what do you got what do you got for us, Will? Man, I'm ex- I'm excited about this offense. I've been uh actually so I've been reading up on you know the game planning with the San Francisco 49ers, seeing what they added up last year. Um, and I, I, there's a lot of concepts in there and stuff that research I really love over me search people <laughs> that I think will be, I, I think this system fits Justin Fields so well. I think it fits Demo. I think it fits Khalil Herbert. I think, I think, uh, Cole Komet's going to eat. I think Mooney, Mooney and Valus Jones are going to, they're going to be big playmakers. I, I think our offense is going to be really fun to watch. We're going to have an identity and I, I just can't wait to actually see it in action, e- even before the season starts, even in training camp, preseason, just getting into it, being able to watch the game tape. Because I'm going to, even those preseason games, I'm going to break down that tape. I'm going to be looking at it just to kind of, I know they're not going to give away too much, but they're going to show some concepts. Like you said, the concepts we're going to be able to see. Yeah. We might not be able to see all the intricacies and what yeah. they plan on building they gonna off They're going to show the it. wrinkles. They're going to show the concepts. Yeah. yeah. But we'll see the concepts, and we'll be able to, and especially you, I'll be able to have some talks with you during that time and figure out exactly you know, you know I can't wait. what this offense is going to look like, man. It's going to be nice. You know, you know I'm nice. chomping at the bit to get that real. <laughs> so so let's take, a, let's take a step back before we get out of here, too. So now, understanding we got pulling guards, right? We got pulling guards. We got pulling tackles. We got pulling tight ends. We got pull, we're pull, in this system, we're pulling everybody in the power version of it. In the zone, we got to be able to be agile and fleet of foot and quick, right? Just from the run standpoint and our running backs, what do you think about our offensive line fitting this system? The guys we got, right? The guys we got fitting, being a fit for what you we think they're trying to do. Uh, that's, that's one of the things I like is almost – all the guys we drafted fit well in the outside zone. Um, Braxton Jones was especially was like almost every scouting report you read on him was like, Hey, if this guy gets into an outside outside zone scheme, he could probably start day one. Um, And it's the same thing. Yeah. He got them long arms. He's athletic. (laughs) Um, I love the depth of our offensive line right now. Obviously we don't have a lot of the big name, guys or a lot of guys who are going to be vying for pro bowls this year. But I think Tevin Jenkins is one of those guys. He's going to be one of those guys going forward. And I'm really, really impressed with our running back group, even more. So I just began watching tape on that rookie trust and Ebner. Mm-hmm. I, I advise everyone to at least go look at his highlights. Like even if you don't want to watch a second of film on him, go watch that kid's highlights. He looks like Reggie Bush. And I, I, I watched one game of tape so far, and I was like, my eyes were like this. I was like, oh, my goodness. Like, I love watching that kid. And it's something that Poles talked about before the draft. He said running back is the deepest position in this draft. And everyone was like, running back? We don't need a running back, though. And then he goes and picks running back in the sixth round. And I look at this kid on tape, and I, I love Khalil Herbert. I love David Montgomery. I even like Darrington Evans. And now you got a guy – trust in Ebner this kid is just blazing fast and I I don't know how the offensive line is going to shake out in front of him but I know we have more depth than we've had at any point in time during the Matt Nagy era 
Right. We're not, we're not going to have guys like Rashawn Coward out there starting who don't belong in the NFL, you know. We're going to have tough, mean, athletic players who maybe they're not pro bowlers or studs right away, you know. Maybe they're serial, you know. But right. these guys, they're tough, and they're not going to be awful, I don't think. I, I think we're at least going to be mid-tier average offensive line. We, right. we might be a little below average. We're not going to be top 10. But I don't expect this offensive line to be horrible at all. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I agree with you. I think um, I'm, I'm coming off some of my takes, um, Swifty. I really am. No, I, I was conflicted with that this week, right? But, again, it's not a pride thing. One Which thing, one? Of, one of the things, right, um, one, of the takes I'm, one of the takes I'm pivoting off of is to add more outside zone to what I think we'll do, Right. It's just what, what what made me conflicted on that approach is is so so what happens is McFay Lafleur is outside zone right to me Shanahan was more power driven but I didn't realize how much outside zone he actually incorporated into his concepts right but to add to that. I still say what makes his offense exceptional is his power concepts. So that's the conflict, right? He runs, he runs outside zone, but what people don't realize is what makes it exceptional is the counters he does and how he does his counters, which is the power concept, right? Yep. Yep. And then also, if I add in the Luke gets the uh, Joe Moorhead factor, right? Joe Moorhead is a power guy, but he run, he messes the two philosophies or concepts together. He runs like power zone, which is an actual play. You can run zone. Uh, you can run power zone. You can pull a guy yep. and run zone. So he messes the two concepts together. So, you know, it's like the, 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 the hard part, I admittedly, is taking my own philosophy out of it and saying, OK, all right, I'll pull back on me and, and drive in on what these guys do and why or why not it work, why it doesn't work. So I like that. Um, as far as the offensive line is concerned, I'm pivoting a little bit off of that, off of my takes on the offensive line too. I still – the one thing I'm not giving up though is I don't want a rookie left tackle. So I'll, I'll, I, I think – so, so I, I wanted to touch on that a little bit because I know obviously you don't want – that's never the ideal situation. Yeah. But what we do want, and that's the thing is, you want our best player at left tackle out there. And if the guy he's competing against is Larry Borum, who has like eight starts, pretty and is was also a fifth-round pick and ha also played. Here's the difference, okay? Larry Borum, if that's the guy you're competing with, right? Yeah, he's not a rookie anymore. He has eight starts. He played a little bit last year. But what about he played on the right side his entire college career. Mm. Braxton Jones played on the left side. Right. So if you're thinking about that, does that, does a couple games or one season really change your opinion when the other guys played left tackle his whole career versus a guy who's played right tackle. And then the other guys you're competing with is Julian Davenport, who when he played 16 games at left tackle was the worst rated left tackle in football. Mm -hmm. And he played a couple games last year and was okay, but he's he's more of a journeyman veteran, you know. So at right. that point, it's like, yeah, maybe you don't want a rookie, but if that rookie ends up being better than Larry Borum or Julian Davenport, which I think is very possible, then a rookie it is, you know. I mean, what what's yeah. the what's the biggest thing holding them back when they're all learning the same schemes at the same time right now? It's right. not like. Forum played in this scheme last year and he has a full year of this scheme to take advantage of. It's more, oh, we're all learning these schemes now, so we're all kind of rookies in this scheme. But if this guy is more athletic and fits the scheme better, as long as he looks like he can play, I don't see a huge deal in that, especially if we're going to run the ball as much as we do. Right. Now, no, now you make a great point with that, with, with us running the ball as much as we do. As much as I hope, or as we expect, we do, yeah. You yeah, know. I would hope, I would hope, because that's one way to cover it up. But listen, I'll I'll tell you why 
I'm thinking that way, right? It has nothing to do with our internal battles or what happens inside Hallis Hall or the Bears organization. It has everything to do with what happens once the season starts or when you put the pads on. Because no way, any way you shake it up, he can he could beat Larry out, but that's to me not that's not saying much, right? He could beat Larry out, but when you gotta go think about it, so whether you're whether you're on a whether you're running a three four or four three, defense's best pass rush is usually lining up on our weak side. So you have a rookie that he might have beat Larry Borum, but he has to go up against pick the top three pass rushes in the league, and he has to go, listen, my, my criteria, remember my criteria is I need you to win 101 so I can run my stuff. I, as an offensive play caller, I can't run my stuff if you can't win 101. So to me, I want a guy that has seen, even if, even, even if it's not Tevin's best position, I like what I saw out of Tevin going up against team's best pass rusher in the short film work he showed me. So watch this. He's seen these, he's seen a plethora of pass rush moves at an NFL level. So I'm saying, this is my start. We ain't had a quarterback. We we have not had a quarterback ever. This is the one time I had something nice. I'm gonna protect him. With the best guy, I don't care about him being – if he's great at right, that's great. Put him over there later. But right now, I'm trying to save my quarterback's career because they're going to tee off on him. He got his back turned, throwing a pass, and I got – listen, the first, if, if, listen, if this dude get beat and get my quarterback killed – I'm, I'm shutting down the channel. I ain't watching another but game. What's okay? I'll never turn it off. I'll never. I mean, you saw him get. He got know, laid out. I don't I'm think there's extreme. any way. I don't think there's any way he's gonna get hit harder than the hits he took last season with that horrible scheme. They didn't have him comfortable with the offensive line. He's running right now in our mini camps. He's taking all the reps with the ones, with the twos, with the threes. They're getting Simeon a couple reps a game. And he's getting more comfortable. Last year, he was just getting the twos. Dalton was getting the ones. Foles was getting the threes. He was only comfortable with the second team. Now he's getting comfortable with the starting center, the backup center, the third string center. He's showing what all those wide receivers can do. Right. The the left tackle, I mean, the, the biggest point is, I mean, you're, you're saying, yeah, if, if he gets killed, but Davenport gets killed all the time. Borum got blown up a few times last year. It's not about... To me, it's not about you're putting too much emphasis on just him being a rookie. It's more about which of those guys can play. And if Braxton Jones can play better than Larry Borum, I don't care if he's a rookie. Nah, so 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 that's that's the difference, right? I'm not asking them to compete against uh uh Borum. I'm saying if 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 Tevin Jenkins is my best offensive lineman, put Tevin at left. He uh, has more see, experience. I, 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 this is the thing. I, I always liked Tevin, and I, I didn't want to. I was one of. I don't say he's a guy. I never pigeonholed him to where he could just be a left tackle. But right. he said it in the press conference recently himself that he is more comfortable on the right side. If well, I'm the, you're, I'm the, I'm the if coach. he's possibly your best off, you got to make. Flip. You got to quit I'm, moving these guys around, man. Flip. They should have kept him at right tackle last year. Flip. Nobody I'm, wanted flip. him to if play I'm the left coach, tackle. I don't care where he's comfortable. You're the only the reason we put him at left tackle is because of his draft status, because he was a second round pick. But, but that's Swift, the thing is, Jones is a more natural left tackle. Jones can't play right tackle. But hear me well, out here, though. It's the here's, most. Imp- it's the most important mm-hmm. position on the offensive line. I don't agree with that anymore. See, the left tackle and the right tackle teams don't do that anymore. They don't always send their pass rusher from the left side. They move their guy around every play. If you're going against the Browns, one play Clowney's on the left side. One side he's on the one next play is on the right side. Next play is coming up the middle. And we did the same thing with Khalil Mack. He did okay. not line up against the. We'd put him on the other side just to get him against the worst tackle. So right. it's not he's gonna go against good pass rushers, but those pass rushers will only will move to that whatever side Braxton Jones is on or the rookie is on, whichever yeah. side Jenkins isn't on. 
that's where they're going to put their best pass rusher so, because so they can flop day. sides. So, but so here's what you're missing. No. Wait, wait, I got one more point, but you're missing okay, the biggest okay. point here. What's Tevin Jenkins' biggest strength? He's one of the best run blockers I've ever seen. He's right there on the right side. Where are you running your power and zone concepts to? Behind Tevin Jenkins and the right guard, I think, is going to be our right guard, Zachary Thomas. The two best run blockers on our team, on that right side, running behind them half the time. And that's when, when Jones is out there one-on-one -on -one in a pass play, send him some chips. Like, help him out. We got guys who can help him okay. out. It's, so it's that's, not about and, that to me. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying. So that's the second reason why I'm saying what I'm saying, right? So so my 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 philosophy, my approach is this. I want him on the left because Justin is right handed. Right. And if I if I'm going to play a weak, if I'm going to play a lesser talented guy. Right. I don't mind. I don't mind them sending their best pass rusher. At, at anybody on the right side because Justin is right-handed and his his field of view when he's right-handed is the right side. So if a guy gets beat on the right side, Justin can escape and get out of that. Where he can't get beat is to his black side, his back side. So it's not it's not a best guy just going to the left for the reason for the purpose of just going. It has to do with the field of view. And taking advantage of, of Justin's skill set. So if he gets beat, if he gets beat to his field of view, which is I'm turned this way, I'm turned to the right. If I see Jones get beat, I can make my move. And even if he gets beat and get out of there. Now, my follow-up is my follow-up is again, I don't, I don't want to chip. Where possible, the great teams, the great offices, offenses, they don't chip. They don't uh, leave 49ers the 49ers chip, though. They definitely chip. But they, they I mean, definitely. Yeah, you, you, you're going to do it against the greats. You're going to do it where you have to. But ideally, the, 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 be, the lower your chip and delay in tight end help numbers are, the better your offensive offense is going to be numerically. Like, you're going to have a numbers advantage starting out. So even with that, right, even with that, so if I put them at right and say we got a chip at right, Right. I'm going to do a chip delay. I'm going to do a chip release. Right. With the running back. He can chip. But still, if he say he chips, that running back is still in Justin's view. So it say he does a chip release into the flat. OK, he chip released in the flat. I'm going to take the nickel. I'm going to dump it out there in the flat. I'm going to take the nickel. Two nickels make a dime. Right. I just want to put everything simple within this field of view. Whereas, right, say if he has to chip on the left. He has to chip and turn back against his natural field of view to throw to his uh his outlet as safety receiver. It's, I, I love Justin Fields backs. I mean, one of the things he does though is he can he throws just as well to the left as he does the right. And his field his vision, he's usually not he's usually not like this looking one way. He's usually looking more towards the front. And he can see the guys coming from the left or the right. And his biggest problem last year was the blitz recognition and he got hit just as many times not looking right in the face than he did from behind he took more hits directly to the face than he did from the back so that's that's I, I've always understood that like left tackle is always going to be the most important position on the offensive line if you have a right-handed quarterback it protects the blind side but with the way defenses change and move their guys around now and give different looks it, it's almost it's so much more advanced now that it's not, it's never just, okay, our best pass rusher is going to go one on one the whole game. Like back in the day with, you know, Lawrence Taylor and those Reggie Whites and those guys, those guys would line up at the same side the whole game and they yeah. would battle that tackle the whole game. It, yeah. it doesn't happen like that now. Like they move yeah, they're them gonna, around they're gonna find, everywhere. They're going to find a mismatch. They're going to find a mismatch no matter what. But what I'm saying is, I'm going to have that. I'm going to have that. I'm going to design it in a way where I know, hey, Justin, I'm not, I'm not going to have you worried about both sides. I'm going to have you worried about one side, which is the side you can see. If you, if you get beat, he's coming from the right. And we're going we're gonna to practice escape moves, understanding we're going to practice I think, escape, escape moves from both sides. I think I, that's I, what I, they want, too. But the, thing, the, 
I think Braxton Jones is the best pass blocker, though. That That's where we're missing out on. Tevin Jenkins might be our best tackle overall, uh, but okay. Braxton Jones is more – he's a better pass blocker against right now, who? I think. Against who? Against, against the SEC. I mean, Tevin's only played four games in the NFL. It's not like he has, like, a wide range of tape, and he was but coming Bra- off back Braxton surgery. Jones is Southern Utah, and, and hey, he's played some nah, big games, man. We'll, I, I gotta <laughs> see, I gotta see him put the pass on the Senior and, Bowl. You saw him at the Senior Bowl. He he, but see, I, I was critical of him at the Senior Bowl too. I thought he, mm. I thought he was terrible on the left. I thought he was. Ter- you didn't like him on the cool. left. I thought he looked more clumsy on the left. He he, oh. he he rolled his own ankle at the senior bowl on the left. I mean, you can't make one play and take that much I'm out just, of it. I mean. I'm just saying. Matter of fact, this matter of fact, the senior ta- the senior bowl tape is the only one I wanted to see because it was elevated competition. Because that's going to be the big question. It's going to be, bro, your your offensive alignment. That's that's Aaron Donald. That's not that's not little Timmy from. Tupelo, Mississippi. That's fucking. I mean, sorry. That's Aaron <laughs> Donald. That's Aaron, that's Aaron Donald, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, we got Don Burr in here. Oh no. <laughs> Don what Burr, up, Don? Him, nah, he he uh, he enjoying our go our back and forth. Don Burr, go check on. Just go check on. Just, he had a hope. defensive tackle retire today, and he doesn't even know because he spends all his time in Bears chats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my guy. But but but. <laughs> But great debate, great debate. None, nonetheless, we got two different perspectives. I think that's that's good. My, mine is just, I don't know. I just, I, I don't want to see. So, in your I'm opinion, what, what, what would you? Because I don't, I don't, I don't want to move. I don't want to keep moving Tevin Jenkins around. Um, I understand, like, and I think he's going to be better off in this scheme if he's more comfortable. Leave him at right tackle, and we can find a left tackle. But if you don't. If you didn't want Braxton Jones out there and Borum's not cutting it, and we're, we're not ruling out Larry Borum, we're just going with hypotheticals here. If Larry Borum wasn't cutting it, what would you do then? Would you would you rather sign a vet like Riley Reef or Eric Fisher? I would. If you or, if you if you really don't like if listen, if you got two guys, you don't have one. And if you really sold on leaving Tevin out at right, then I'm bringing in a vet. I said that I'm bringing in a vet who has seen. Who has seen a, a library of pass rush moves, right? And that can can mentor the younger guy. Like I'm not saying Braxton won't be the guy one day, but I'm bringing in a holdover guy that says, "All right, look, man, I just I think you're almost there. I think you can be that guy. I think you need a year or two, right? So bring in a pass, a holdover guy. You know it's going to be a one year deal, right? And give him that time to get stronger and see more stuff. Like because as he's sitting in the room. As he's sitting in the, in the old lineman room, he's going to see, oh, that was a double swipe move. Uh, that was this move. That was a pull and push, pull and push move. Like he's going to see, and he gets more camp reps. He gets more. Mind you, we don't put the pass on until August. So I like what they're doing. They're in T-shirts and shorts right now. Move, Listen, move these guys all over the place. But when y'all put them pads on and Robert Quinn out there, or you got all these new guys that have – a library of pass rush moves that some of those guys haven't seen before, they're going to get exposed. They're going to get exposed. And that experience is going to come into play. Like, you know. And you know, I think it's still, it's still possible. And that's, that's the thing. We, we won't really learn out, learn much about the offensive line until we get to next week's OTAs. Someone said it in the chat. Um, it's the ramp up period. It's going to be a little more physical for the first time. And then once we get to training camp, and we're full pads, and they're having those practices, that's where we're going to find out. And if if they don't see enough from one of those guys, Braxton Jones or Larry Borum, then it is possible we still sign a vet because those guys are still out there, the uh, right Reefs and the I Eric think a Fisher. lot of times, too, we forget about, like, the last free agency push period. Like, we got a whole summer. Pads don't go into August, and usually some of these vets ain't trying to go into none of these little – rookie mini camps and stuff like that anyway so yep. they're resting their bodies up yeah, yep. they're resting their bodies like call me when you're ready to go to work oh, I, I, i've tried to talk to people on twitter about that man and I, i've had some talks with people who they just don't understand it man they'll, they'll sit there and call me stupid and say if you don't think 
these players, these this one guy tried to tell me he worked with like uh in the industry or something. He's like, all these players care about are money. And I'm like, nah, man, they care about resting their body. They care about spending a month with their family. They care about which side of the country they have to move to. They right. care about a lot of things. They care about previous coaches. Like, yeah, the money matters, but it seems like people think that's all that matters. And you, you these guys have to be signed early. And it's like, no, a lot of these guys, a lot of these free agents, they're waiting to see if there's a better fit because they also care about starting too. And no one wants to you, think about that. But you know, if, you're, if you're 32 years old, you've been in the NFL 12 years, you think you want to go back up some rookie somewhere? Right. No, you want to go to a spot that's going to give you a chance to start and play. You know. You, you, you know what I give people like that, Swifty, when they make takes like that? You know what I give them? The drunk that's, uncle. I give them that. <laughs> oh, it ain't work for me, Swifty. Oh, oh, no. Man. Swift, I've been, I've been boop, uh, boop, so Swift. Boop. I got to tell you what happened. I got to tell you. I saw happened. it. I saw it. You tried to load the intro video up and it I, didn't I go. Said, I messed around and deleted all my videos. You did. I mean, oh no! I mean, doing too much sometimes. But listen, man, that was. But see, that's that's what I like, though. That was a good debate, bro. You broke out a different perspective, right? And you're right. A lot, a lot of that stuff will come into play. I think we're we're both right in the sense like two things can be true. Oh, we'll yeah. really we'll really know when they put the pass on because ain't no way Chris Morgan is gonna allow a guy that's getting whipped to play at either tackle spot. What I don't want to see, what I really don't want to see is I prefer not to see is us having to use a lot of chips and uh, tight end help at either side. The more we can get away with it, meaning the more we're West Coast, ball is out, um, three-step drop, ball is out, it doesn't matter. I don't have to use a tip, uh, a chip. Um, and then also I don't have to – I'm not holding the ball forever because the ball is out. The more our offense stays on time and then – uh, I think that'll be good. And then also, if we have to play Braxton at left, now, if we West Coast and the ball is out like that, three-step drop, ball is out, he hasn't had to protect for 10 seconds, Matt Nagy, um, then we'll we'll be good to go either way. But I'm, I'm like you. I'm anxious to see what happens at the August camp. Um, but I'm still going to be watching the game like this if I got a <laughs> – if I if I got a if I got a rookie, yeah, I just I don't. yeah, and I I agree with you, coach. Like nobody nobody ideally wants to start a rookie left tackle, right? Listen, like if I'm a that's... defensive end or outside linebacker, I'm like, mm, sacks. <laughs> but at this point, I mean, that's how they are to. I mean, go last year, that's how they are to every position on our offensive line. Everybody was like, mm, we eaten. So to All me, right. it's more about our line was in a bad state. And we have three spots locked down right now. And the left tackle just happens to be the one that's open. We don't have a veteran left tackle. We might be able to find one, but at the same point, those guys are on the street. They're on the street for a reason. They are, they can come in and be decent stop holders, but they're not going to be guys that are going to be here for four or five years. Yeah. They're going to be one to two year max. Yeah. And if, if Braxton Jones, what I, what they're doing is what I want to see. I want to see Braxton Jones and, and Larry Borum compete. And yeah. if those guys both fall on their face the first uh, preseason game, you give them a chance to bounce back. If if we're going in that second preseason game and neither of those guys have stood out or won that job yet, that's when you that's when you maybe contact a vet or call a vet. Right now isn't when you do it because you don't want to take the reps away from those guys. Yeah. You want to give them the reps. You want to let them points, compete. Liv. And if they great don't point. stand out, then, okay, then it's time. Sign great somebody. Point. Great, great, great point. And to your point, backing that up with what we said about even if we draw the same situation like we talked about last year with Thomas Graham Jr., right? This is the time. To get your reps. This is the time to prove it. You got two more months, right? Don't come crying during the season. Uh, we didn't evaluate talent. About, no. These guys had plenty of time to prove themselves, right? So to your point, the vets are at home resting their bodies, 32, 33, 34-year-old, playing a collision sport. Mind you, they've been playing this sport since peewee football. Um, the bodies are hurting. Oh. Bodies banged up. But again, if you know, for those of us that never played the sport or coached it, I get it. This is this is just Madden to you. This is just Madden 23 or, or fantasy football. <laughs> um 
it wouldn't it wouldn't resonate. It wouldn't register. Not not to be snarky, but it just is the way it is, bro. Um, do me a favor, guys. Go out and check out Swifty's uh, video he just put out on O Line. It's another banger. I got in the comments just to keep the algorithm up and and stir up some foolishness. Um, I was just having fun yesterday. I was having a good day. Um, but go check that video out. If you are a field soldier and you haven't subscribed to Twif Swifty's channel, man, what you waiting on, bro? You tripping. Get over there and subscribe to the channel. He's got the content coming throughout the week. We wrap it all up here on Sundays at 1. Also, remember, when we get to the season, I'm bumping this up. Right, we're going to do a pregame show because I'm not watching the game with y'all. <laughs> I, I can't do that. I need to be focused. And then I plan on going to a lot of games this year as well. So I don't want to be worried about hosting the show and watching the game at the same time. So we're going to bump the show up to a pregame show. We're going to have the hottest like pregame like show on the net. Shout out to you guys again, to all the field soldiers. If you're watching this video on the playback, sorry about the technical difficulties. Do me a favor, like, subscribe, run the notifications up. Follow us on Bears, on Twitter, Bears3, um, Bears360 underscore Coach T. Swifty, throw out your Twitter handle real fast for them so the people know. Yo, at Swiftism TTV, you can find me on YouTube, Swift Sports Network. You guys know if you guys are, if you guys subbed to me and haven't uh, subbed to Coach T yet and you're out there, you better, you better hit that sub button right now. Coach T's the truth. Bro, y'all seen how I dropped this knowledge on these playbooks. Don't quit. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. I'm in my bag. I, I appreciate the love in the comments while I was doing that, too. Hey, to all the drunk go stay drunk out there. Stay high. Keep doing what you do. Y'all know how we do. We're going to check y'all next week, next Sunday at 1 p.m. As always, bro. Bear down. Bear down, boys. None of the technicalities right today. <laughs>